wherever you're watching from today, it's an honor, truly an honor to be with you today. So we're going to talk about the miracle of home. We want to talk about home. And uh, that's a big word to me. It's one of my favorite words, my absolute favorite words, because home is the place where we live, where we go at the end of the day and put our head on a pillow and, and sleep. I love home. And I believe the atmosphere of home is so critical. But home is actually our heart as well. I believe our, one of the most truest expressions of home is who finds residence in your heart and who you find your, um, your life in, um, whose hearts are touched by your life. It's this beautiful, it is that feeling of safety and comfort in the home of people's hearts and who's in your heart. And home is here. Home is where we worship together. All over the world, people are worshiping together in the presence of God. And we love to say welcome home as we welcome people to church. And I know as you walked in the doors today and you've already sensed home, even watching all these gorgeous families get dedicated, uh, these children get dedicated to God this morning and last night is an expression of family and of home. And I am so grateful that John and I have been blessed to find ourselves in a, in a home, in a family. But even if we're in Boston, if we're not in Vancouver, Canada, and we're in Boston today, this is home for us because you are our family, and I love God's family so much. And here's another part. Home is heaven. We all long. This is not our final resting place. This is not where we're going to end up one day. One day we will know what it's truly all about when we get that full revelation of heaven. And there's many people that I have loved with my whole heart that are no longer here present on earth with us in the natural, but they're home in heaven and our hearts long for heaven. So always connect your hope, your dreams, the purpose of your life to eternity. And when you do that, you will make the right choices for how you build home in your heart, in your church, and in your life today. So how many here, um, your mother's in heaven already? I hurt with you. We're all here because of mom. <laughs> and uh, it's so amazing to know that even though she's not here she's not gone forever Amen. see you again Amen. and we get to have that uh, mother's day forever yes. and on a mother's day like this there's so much celebration you know my mother raised 11 kids i was the second oldest of 11 and she said it many times and she wasn't kidding I was more trouble than all the others put together. And I have absolutely no trouble believing that. <laughs> I married the bad boy. <laughs> the fun boy. Uh, but she still loved me. And I think a mother's love is so important and so amazing. And even if you don't have biological children, and even if you're not female, you can still have a heart that... that wraps around others and holds them tight and gives them that uh, nurturing that we only get from mom. And so Mother's Day is a really, really important day. But when we think of home, I think of hearts because home is this place. But the place, which is visible, comes out of the invisible. The place, which is for many of us is a house, is a home. Even here, we, we have a, a, a building that we're meeting in. But home really isn't about the structure. It's about the atmosphere. And the atmosphere of home comes out of us. It's not something that we enter when we get home. It's something we bring in when we get home. And I think it's so important to recognize that it comes out of our heart. So let, let me ask you, how's your heart? Is your heart this place that's warm and welcoming and non-judgmental, like we talked about? Is, is it a safe place? Is your heart this place where people want to come? And, and, and you know that people want to go where they're celebrated. Yeah. Yeah. They want to go where they know they're going to be celebrated. Is that your heart? And we think about home, like as you walked in here, you saw the sign, welcome home. Church is home, but we build church, not with bricks and mortar, but we build it with the heart of God, 
with, with having this heart open to celebrating every person that walks in the door, whether they look like you or not, whether they talk your language or not. I love the church. One of the things I love about church is you can travel all over the world and like this church, I look around and I see a whole bunch of different looking people. I see different ages. I see different colors. You know, I'm sure there's different languages. That's church and it's home. Uh, one of the movies lately I have absolutely loved is The Jesus Revolution. Anybody seen that thing? I cried through the whole thing. And then I watched it again because I thought it was maybe a, you know, a problem with, uh, I had, you know, testosterone levels too low or something. <laughs> but I cried through the whole thing again. And the reason was that I wasn't a hippie. It, t it talked about the, the 1970s and the Jesus people and the, 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 you know, the hippies. And it was amazing what happened. Actually, the greatest renewal that North America has ever seen. But it was because there was this pastor who opened their home to people that didn't look like him, didn't talk like him. Chuck Smith welcomed in these hippies. And I believe today there is a world of hippies. I'm not really, but, but, but a world of people that want to be welcomed in, that want you to open your doors and, and uh, as a church, please. There's, there's hurting people all over. Hurting to belong. Yeah. Home is where you belong. Yeah. So if you've heard us share before, because we have been here a few times, you would know that our story, you know, we got married 50 years ago today, but at the four-year mark, hit a pretty hard place in our lives. And it didn't look like our we would be sustained in marriage. It looked like it was coming apart at the seams. And so I want to encourage all of you today that today can be the difference maker. There was a day where I decided I can't do life without God anymore. The way I am building my life and my family is not the way God would have me. We had been out of church for a season. We had, you know, our marriage was in crisis and everything on the outside looked shiny and beautiful. John was a brand new dentist. I was pregnant with our third daughter, had two beautiful little girls, but life wasn't beautiful and it wasn't perfect. And there was a day that I decided I can't do it this way anymore. And that might be a day for you today. You might feel like home doesn't feel safe. Home doesn't feel beautiful. Your marriage doesn't feel like what you had hoped it would be. It might feel fragmented, but there's always hope. Put your dream in God and, and c continue to press into that. And at a very desperate place in my life, I turned my face back towards Jesus and said, I've had life with you and life without you. I'm not living another day without you. And as I opened my Bible, as I began to read it again, just scripture began to just become like living color to me. I had to feel like I had read it in black and white, but truly I was seeing it now in, in um, high definition. And one of the scriptures that God put in my heart that I have claimed, I have framed, I have made art out of this scripture, it is my promise that we hold on to, is found in Proverbs chapter 24, verses 3 and 4, and it says, through skillful and godly wisdom. You need both. We dedicated these beautiful children to Jesus today. You need skillful and godly wisdom, it says. It's a life, a home, and a family built. And by understanding, it is established on a good and sound foundation. And by knowledge, the rooms are filled with precious and pleasant riches. So that talks about the atmosphere of the home that you are building I did not realize when I was raising my daughters, Angela, Danica, and Ashley, that I was in fact raising my grandchildren. I did not know that when I was raising my children yeah. and building my marriage, I was in fact raising a generation and a church that we would plant 38 years later. I didn't know that, but God did. So what you're building today is bigger than you know. The, you may not be married yet. You may not have children yet, but what you are building in your life right now is creating the life that God has, has for you. So do it well. Every minute matters. You might think, oh, it doesn't matter right now. I'm not married yet. It doesn't matter. I'm not a parent. Yes, it matters. Because today, the choices you make are building the future that you will live in. Amen? The fact is you don't get lucky and find the right person. <laughs> you be the right person and attract the right people. 
and you actually come out of you comes that, that, that future. So recognize that we create our own atmosphere and it starts with the words that we believe and the words that we speak, the words that you allow to be spoken in your home. There's words that you should not allow. There's words that, that, that are peace breakers and you will not disturb the peace in our home. And we, we actually build with that. And we talked about it. I thought that was beautiful, how the baby dedication, how all of us in the room were part of it. Yeah. So um, if you're going to build this supernatural home, tell us how, Helen. Just a few thoughts that I would have to give you today. Three quick thoughts. Number one, invite God's presence to dwell in your home. God is with you. And John says the atmosphere, you actually shape it by your very life. And I wonder what it feels like. Do you love coming home? I think this is actually a very practical thought to create an atmosphere that is peaceful. And it's not just by how you decorate it or what you fill it with, but do you, is the atmosphere of your home one of chaos or one of peace? And it's really important to me. Is it a place that, that everybody loves to come home to? I want to, you know, there's a lot of people that don't love going home. Maybe you grew up in a home, and maybe you're feeling that today. Home doesn't feel safe. The home doesn't feel welcoming. What can we do to shape and create that atmosphere? Make it welcoming. Make it beautiful. Um, and, and I'm not just talking about the physical. I love a beautiful home. I love setting a beautiful table. I love cooking a great meal. Those are all things that I enjoy. But you can have a beautiful table and a perfectly appointed home and, and great food on the table with no peace. I would rather have peace and have it and have it enjoyed in a beautiful atmosphere. Also, make your home a place of worship and prayer. Fill your home with the presence of God. God let you, we expect that when we come here to Connect Church today and whatever thing, um, uh, campus you're at today, we expect people to have done the work, don't we? That when we come in, it's not chaotic. We expect the presence of God. And I think it's right to. And your team serves you and wants that. Let's do that in our physical homes. The anointing and the presence of God is not just for what happens in church. It happens every moment when you're driving in your car and the cre um, when you're in your home. Let it be there first, because I think what we bring to this house of God will be shaped by what we have in the home that we live in. So um, prayer is a fight of faith. Be a prayer warrior, not just on Sundays, but every day of, of the week. And, and thirdly, I just want to remind you when it comes to creating and shaping atmosphere, be mindful of moments and memories that are created in your home. I know I'm a bit tender today because it's, it's a landmark moment for us. But when I think about what has been shaped um, through a marriage, and not because we're perfect. Boy, I could tell you stories. We're not perfect, but we serve a perfect God. Yes. We, are, we, we serve a God that is for us. And I think of what we have been able to live out because of the faithfulness of God, because of the love and the faith and the wonder of marriage. I think of the experiences that have happened in our homes that we have built and our children have lived and our grandchildren. And I think they love coming home and I'm grateful for that. And I pray that they always will because I know for our children and our grandchildren, home is my, our home, literally our physical home, is one of their favorite places on earth. Why? Not, it, it's because they're loved there. They're celebrated there. And over the years, you know, whether it's our small group that comes there or family celebrations, and what is that all about? It truly is about creating memories. It is creating moments, milestones. And I want to encourage you, maybe you're looking at the environment you live in today and you think, oh, I don't really love it. I'm going to challenge you. What can you do to change that? What can you do to actually create an environment that not only you love to come into, but other people that you love, love to come into? Enough said. <laughs> Let me talk about the miracle of wonder. Fill your home with wonder. Fill our church with wonder. What do you mean? Never take it for granted. Never just see things just whatever. <laughs> you know, so often I would try to correct people when they pray the prayer of the just. You know what the prayer of the just is? Lord, just do this. Lord doesn't just do anything. 
He does everything above and beyond, overboard. And don't, don't live a just another day, life. Don't live just another greeting, another whatever. Every moment, take advantage of it. Have it full of wonder. You know, Jesus said, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? But I've come to give you life and that more abundantly. Yes. You know what more abundantly means? It means more than you can handle, okay? More abundantly talks about, like, not just this present, but I'm going to give you a future. What I give you is, is going to keep going. It's like the best is yet to come. The devil's come to steal, kill, and destroy. With him, the worst is yet to come. But when we live God's way, we live this, house, this life of wonder. You know, we're upstairs and we're talking about, you know, the service with the, with the team. And, and they heard it was our 50th. So the question was, so give us, what's, what's the key? And if you've heard us before, you've heard these two words before. Stay amazed. Stay amazed. Why would you get bored with that person who's created in the image of God? You think you know everything about that person? Think again. You think you've discovered all the treasure? No way. You need to keep on discovering. Stay amazed is a choice that we make that actually causes life to be, wow. I love studying the brain. And, and, and I love kids. You watch all the kids up here. And if, if you've ever watched a child that's like three, four, they love learning. I mean, they just love learning. Everything to them is like new. And, and you, you can see their brains going. Psh, psh, psh. There's, there's, there's new thoughts and new ways of thinking happening. And they just, it's so exciting to them. That's life. That's what Jesus came to bring us. That's why we, we need to become like a little child. But why do you get old? Why? You think your age is going to make you old? No, old is a frame of mind. My choice is I, I choose. I, I'm going to be the oldest living teenager. I challenge you. I'm going to outlive you as a teenager. I'm never getting old. I'm never getting bored. Getting bored means you just take things for granted. You, you, you miss the moment. You miss the miracle. You know, when you take things for granted, you treat them with dishonor. Really, that's what dishonor means. And when you treat stuff with dishonor, you miss the miracle that's in the moment. And our home should be full of wonder. Come on. Every time we come to church, you know, if, if I was asking you for one thing here as a church, one thing, what would that one thing be? Love, church. Love church, love God, love his people, love the family, love what you get to do. Don't just come. Don't just, you know, take up space again. Love church. But when you come with your heart to love church, full of expectancy, when I say stay amazed, you got to look for it. it. It doesn't come and smack you in the face. You got to look for that amazing. And when you look for it, you find it. And it changes everything. Why would you live a dull, boring life? You know, most people think marriage is boring. Why? Maybe because so many married people look bored. Could it be? I think that we need to let the world know marriage just gets better and better and better. It really does. I, I'm not just saying that. It really does. Like this morning, you know, I, I, this wasn't a plan, but, you know, I gave my wife a hug this morning and I couldn't let go. And we're both in tears, and she's mad at me because I wrecked her makeup. <laughs> but it's, it's just... I wasn't mad at you, but you did wreck my makeup. But it's, it's life, and that more abundantly, please, start living. But that starts with this wonder. You know what happens in your brain when, you, when, when you're living a life of wonder? Your brain keeps on growing. I was told back in university days, I graduated in 1978 as a dentist, and we were told at that time that when you were born, you had so many neurons, and they, they started to die. <laughs> so for the rest of your life, bad news. You get less and less and less. But now we know there's such a thing as neurogenesis. Your brain will produce new neurons. And there's neuroplasticity, where those, those, those ways of thinking will, will increase. You can even take old neurons and turn them into a new way of thinking. 
And all of that is like what Jesus meant to say. Life in that will more abundantly. But it's just such a key. Bring the miracle of wonder into your home. And, and, and you know, your home, the people in your home, there's going to be every day multiple opportunities of wonder. But most of us miss them. Why? Because we're not looking for them. We miss those opportunities to go, wow. And when you see wonder, when you see wow, use your words. Use your words. Words build. Faith comes by hearing. And you could actually put faith into your kids and to the people around them if you use your words. So speak to them. Tell them how amazing they are, what you see in them. So amazing. You know, for so many parents, the, 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 the praise we say are things like, you're so tall. They did nothing to get tall. It was all part of the DNA. But when they do something that is so amazing, when, when they act kind, look for the little things. So often we think that it's just looking for the big things. No, the little things. You know, someone that's been married for like 50, 60 years and one of them goes to heaven, talk to their spouse. I challenge you to, you know, just if you know somebody like that, go talk to them. Ask them what they miss about that person. And it won't be the big things. It'll be the little things. It'll be the things like, like you know, how they gave you that kiss in the morning, how they said, you know, those, those things. Like, <laughs> my wife never sneezes once. <laughs> it's like five or six or seven times. <laughs> Honey, I've never heard you notice that. Oh, I know it's it. I do. But, you know, it's the little things that you notice about people. Stay amazed. You don't have to have the, the, the rocket science. You just need to have the heart to stay amazed. You know, with that, as you were talking, I don't think I brought this up before, but isn't it easy to, um, to miss not just the miracles, but to notice what you don't want to notice? How easy it is to come into our homes and recognize what we don't like about it. How with our children or people we love, the things that irritate us. Though we never have to look for those. They are standing out. They are like shining brightly. And how much we have to choose to not focus on what we don't want, but to focus on what we do want. And it's a lifelong discipline to keep looking for treasure. Because so often, you know, when you walk down a street, you might see there's, you know, miles of beautiful uh, tree-lined streets and blossoms, but if somebody left their garbage out and didn't take care of it, and now, you know, the crows got into it, we notice that. And I want to encourage you to be a person who looks for the good, because the, what isn't good is going to be obvious. And I think so many of the miracles that happen is when we are treasure hunting, is look for the wonder, look for the miracle, because the things we don't want are so obvious. Let's be disciplined people that look to the brightness of the future. If I have a regret in my life, and I have a few, is that I wish I had, had not noticed what wasn't lovely and commented on that time after time, like my children's messy rooms or John not putting his dishes in the dishwasher or whatever. I'm a little OCD with cleanliness. And that has been an issue that actually has robbed me way too often. And I want to be focused more on what, what is good and what is right and what is praiseworthy. <laughs> and our last thought, and we'll close here, um, when it, I think about the miracle of home is the miracle of community. Community is what God created us for. When you think about the very beginning, God created Adam, and he said it was not good that man should be alone. And so he created for him a helper meet. God created us for community. If you think about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the triune God, it's community. It's a relationship. And God created you and I for a relationship, for many relationships. I can guarantee you, you don't have enough friends in your life yet. And don't think you do because there are still many people that God wants you to connect with. We didn't know what was on the other side of meeting the Fry family. You know, it might have just looked like an invitation to come and minister, um, and yet there's a snowstorm, and so we couldn't do what we were invited to come and do, and yet what was birthed out of that encounter was supernatural. You were on the other side of that 
God created us for community. And so I want to encourage you to build healthy community. We cannot function properly without it. As John says, you can't truly be human alone. You need people in your heart, people in your life, and it takes intentionality. We will never become the flourishing person that God's created us to be without community. And yes, some of that community will drive you crazy. Iron sharpens iron, but we need them. And the Bible has created us to build our lives through healthy, life-giving community. As a matter of fact, John just brought this up the other day. Talk about um, how people are being cured and yeah, really in being the medical healed in world, community. You know, we used to think the answer to addiction was sobriety. You know, take away the drugs, take away the alcohol, but it's not. The answer to addiction is community. But community is not sitting beside each other. Community is having others, holding others in your heart. But for many people, they're not part of community. Why? Because there's walls around their heart. They've been hurt, and you're not going not gonna to let anybody hurt you again. You know, being hurt is not a problem if you'll just learn from it. And every one of us are hurt. And if you haven't been hurt, just wait. It's coming. You will get hurt. It's part of life. But community is when we let the walls down. That's where James 5.16, it says, confess your faults to one another that you be healed. Well, it doesn't mean you, you know, talk to somebody and tell them all your sins. It means you let the walls down so that people can come in and see who you really are and see you at your weak parts of life, and they can pray for you. You know, a lot of pastors over the years have thought that they have to sit up here and be perfect. We have to tell everybody all the great things that we've ever done and we've never failed. And the church is so sterile and dead because there's no community in that church. Why? Because people aren't invited into perfect. People are invited into, I'm not so perfect. I need your help. And actually people relate one another with not our strengths as much as our failures. And if we are open to let people in with our failures, that's where community happens. And you know that church is community. It's not buildings. It's community. It's where we invite people in to our hearts. And you're called connect. Do you know what that means? You don't connect until you connect. And connection is not a sitting beside each other thing. Connection is a heart thing. It's where you let, let someone in. Helen it said to me so many times over the past 50 years, he, she said, John, where are you? And I, I, I really kind of get upset. I'm right here. Can't you see? And, and, and then he said, no, I can see you're there, but where are you? And then the next words, let me in. Do you remember when Adam and Eve sinned in, in, in Genesis? And God came looking for them. And his words were, where are you? He's God. I don't think he wonders where they are physically. It was more for Adam and Eve's sake. Where are you? It's like when she asks me, where are you, John? It's not, it's not like she can't see me. It's more for my sake. Where are you? And then I think if, if, if Genesis would have recorded it, God's next words would have been, let me in. See, that's connection. That's community. That's when you're part of each other's life. And, and it, it's simply miraculous in so many ways. And what does that look like? There are people, community, or people that are personally invested. Who are you invested in? And who's invested in you? Proverbs 17, 17 says, A true friend is there at all times. And a brother or sister is born for times of adversity. They see you. Johnny just talked about that. People who actually see you. You don't have your walls up. You know, we get hurt in community, but we're also healed in community. Yeah. Trust that process that God, and even if you've been hurt before, and you'll probably be hurt again, as John said, but I would still rather do life with community and take the risk than shut people out and live lonely and isolated. I need people who will tell me the truth. People who will tell me what I don't know and need, can, maybe can't see in myself, but will love me enough to tell me the truth because that's what relationship looks like, and they call destiny out of me. I would never be doing what I'm doing today if it wasn't for people like John and so many others that saw something in me that I couldn't see in myself. 
that invited me into a greater adventure with God and with people. And so we need people like that in our life that have the, the right, the privilege, and the place to speak into us. We all need them. Can I invite you to just take a moment? I want to pray for you. Just close your eyes, bow your head. and I ask you to do that just to take a look at yourself. It's like if God was to say, let me in, or where are you? It's like, take a look at yourself. What's happening? Where are you? Do you have that relationship with Jesus? He's in your heart. You love him. He loves you. You walk with him. One day when this life's over, you're looking forward to stepping into this place called heaven. And this life will come to an end one day. If today was that day, would you step out of this life into heaven or is there a question mark? If you're not sure, you can change that because he is here and it just takes your choice, your invitation, your open heart. Would you open your heart to him? All across the room with your heads bowed, no one looking around, I'd love to pray a simple prayer for you. If you're saying that, that yes to Jesus, if you're saying, I need to know, I want to know that he's my Lord, my Savior, pray for me. If that's you, wherever you are, could you slip your hand up? Just show me where you're at so I know where I'm praying for. Wherever you are, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? They include that prayer for me. How are you? Yeah, thank you. Where are you? Thank you. Thank you. God already knows where you are. It's, he's asking you for your sake. And you don't have to leave the way you came. Is there anyone else? Say, include me in that prayer. All right, there's hands been up all over the room. and He loves you. I love you. And I'd love to pray for you. Actually, I'd like to lead you in a prayer. And I'm going to ask everyone in the room to pray this simple prayer. If you slipped your hand up, just say these words. Because prayer is just talking to him, talking to God. He's here. You say these words, but say it to him. Everyone say this, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the son of God. You're the son of God. You died on the cross. You died on the cross. Because you love me. Because you love me. To pay for my sins. To pay for my sins. I believe. I believe. You rose again. You rose again. And you're alive right now. And you're alive right now. So I open my heart. So I open my heart. And I invite you. I invite you. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand to church. You.